In our examination of competition in the plant world, let's look first at competition within a species, intraspecific competition. In competition, there are several kinds. There can be active confrontation, direct competition, exploitation for resource, resources, and apparent competition. Probably the two most common kind are two and three in the plant world. A monoculture of plants shows competition even if it's not there initially when plants are small. As they get bigger, they start using resources available for the other one. And the carrying capacity of any uh, habitat is therefore a function of competition. The more closely the plants are crowded together, the more interference they have with one another. When they're at Grown at very high density, individuals are smaller and they're more likely to die. You can see this in a garden when you sow a bunch of seeds for to get plants bigger, you have to thin them as they uh, start to grow. That is, pull some of them out. In this little graph, you can see the distribution of plant sizes as measured by mass of the plant or weight of the plant in a population of forget-me-nots most of the plants are very small fewer and fewer have large size and mass at the time of flowering these are diagrams of the same data in that last graph the bigger circles bigger plants of forget-me-not the smaller are tiny and competition can depend on where you are so for example number one doesn't have much competition at all but maybe there's not much water or nutrients available there whereas at spot two quite an intense competition may be a very good spot to grow so there's a relationship on how big a plant gets and how many plants are present in that area if WM is the yield of an isolated plant and A is the area required to yield that maximum, then the relationship of the density of survivors and mean plant dry weight is given by this equation. B, the negative B power, is the efficiency of resource utilization from 0 to 1. And if B is greater than 1, there's a decline in yield at high densities. In any array of individual plants, there's unequal partitioning of resources. Not all of the individuals are equally good competitors. So size hierarchies develop to end up with a few large and many small individuals, like we saw in that graph of forget-me-nots. If it's a very high density, the hierarchy develops more quickly with some plants growing bigger, shading out the others and their bigger roots sucking up all the water and nutrients. So what happens in populations is you get self-thinning where you have density-dependent mortality with the smallest plants being the first to die. You may have seen this curve before. It's a log-log plot of the number of plants on the x-axis and biomass or plant size on the y-axis. Basically over here you can have lots of plants at a small size but as they grow bigger, as some grow bigger, fewer live. So this line usually ends up with a slope of negative one and a half and this is called the self-thinning curve and you can see in this planting of population of marigolds at two weeks old four weeks old six weeks old and eight weeks old there are um, Here's the distribution of plant size at two weeks. And then you can see there are very few 
larger individuals, fewer and fewer, and more smaller individuals until eventually some of the smaller start to die. And I forgot to point out the number of individuals is many fewer here at eight weeks. More of the smaller have died than the bigger. So I want to talk a little bit about measuring size inequality, but first let's compare the shape of curves and how they change. In the middle is the, the dark, the normal curve. The purple line is skewed to the right, so that means there's more than expected big ones. And the lighter gray is skewed to the left, more than expected small ones. So in addition to skew, you can talk about kurtosis, which is the shape of the curve, the normal shown in the center. A curve is leptokurtic if it's more pointed or steeply sloped, and platykurtic if it's flattened out. So what happens in plant populations as they're thinning is things often become skewed to the left, more little and few big, and more leptokurtic, more pointed. And Jake Weiner and some other people have used the Gini coefficient to look at how size inequality changes over the development of a group of plants, a population where g, the Gini coefficient, is the sum of, of the yields of all the plants in this equation. And basically this coefficient varies from 0 to 1. If all the plants are the same size, g is equal to 0, and you often get this when plants just germinate from seeds. What often happens in natural populations is a few get big and many stay little and many die too. So that leads to greater size inequality. The maximum being if only, there's only one big one and the rest are small. So competition is usually um, size dependent. The bigger ones are better at getting resources. But in addition, the large depress the growth of the smalls, and the smalls have no effect on the large, so competition is asymmetric. And Jake Weiner proposed that this asymmetric competition led to size hierarchies in annual plants. And greater inequality always comes with increasing density. He developed an interesting design to look at the importance of root versus shoot competition. And we're doing an experiment like this in lab where you grow the same number of plants separately in their own containers or together with the roots separated and the tops competing, shoot competition. In B, the shoots separated but the roots competing and in C, total competition. So Jake's conclusion, looking at his work and many others with Thomas, they concluded that competition early in a developing population is symmetric. Seedlings similar size have similar effects on each other. But if the experiment lasts longer than a month or two, asymmetric competition occurs, with the bigger ones negatively affecting the smaller. So it, it seems reasonable that competition for light would be asymmetric, with bigger plants shading the smaller, but soil nutrients we might expect to be symmetric, because there's no shade underground. However, Weiner found that both root and shoot competition increase the Gini coefficient, so both are asymmetric. And the most asymmetry resulted from both root and shoot competition, greater than just root competition, which was greater 
than shoot competition, the inequality resulting from just that. I guess bigger plants have bigger roots that might be better at harvesting water and nutrients. I want to end by looking at this diagram that shows different planting designs that people have used to measure effects of density. And I especially like this design when looking at one species. Here you have them close within a meter and increasingly farther apart. And two species designs are shown in B. I guess you can see that with plants that don't move once they're planted, they do grow and so that changes their competition. So many interesting experiments have been done with these designs.